When I came into the family, there was a lot of things that happened all at once. I never know if it was these other things that were going on or if it was me. And it kills me. State came after us and we left, like all within the same year. This has nothing to do with her coming into the family. Feeling like a single mom in Vegas, but I thought that was what it was. I thought that's what plural marriage kind of entailed a little bit. the first. Hey everyone, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Tuesday, January 24th, 2023. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Robin Brown is the last woman standing in the world of the Sister Wives, and there is always a lot of discussion about her first marriage to her first husband, David Preston Jessup, and there's always a million questions about what happened with the adoption, how did that actually go down, is she lying about the circumstances surrounding her, her divorce? Was Were things as bad as she said they were? And did she really have that expensive of a Victoria's Secret bill? There's a lot that, that we need to unpack, but apparently In Touch has un obtained some documents from the divorce. And according to the divorce, there's some new details that we didn't really know, including what went down with the adoption and uh, whether or not her hus ex-husband was for the adoption or against it. There's also some details about potentially her ex-husband feeling like Robin was turning the kids against him. You can't make this up. So her divorce has been this sort of like elephant in the room. I don't know. Cody talked about it a lot in the very early days. He actually called Robin like this. He had an ick factor to her because she was a divorced mom and he thought she drove like a soccer, like a soccer van, like a minivan going to soccer practice. And he just thought that was gross apparently. But even though he's already married to women that have children, whatever, Cody, I guess it's each uh, potatoes, potatoes, apples or oranges. Oh, like Robin said. Uh, but new documents from In Touch reveal details that I don't think have been previously reported. And I actually was able to dig up an old article through Web Archives back in 2010 when Hollywood Life actually got a copy of the divorce decree, which provided details about her divorce, the debt that she incurred, and the reason for the divorce. So some of the details in this divorce decree are going to be pretty spicy, as McKelty would say for you, and we'll dive into them and we'll weigh them against earlier reports about the divorce. But before we dive into, she's the minivan driving soccer mom with three kids and an ick factor, says Cody. Please give this video a thumbs up if you haven't yet already. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button down there. I just hit 320,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much for hitting the subscribe button. Also, make sure to leave a comment if you have something to say. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of any time I upload new content. As always, share this video with your friends. So the brand new article comes from In Touch, and it's about her exclusive details about the divorce she had from her first husband. For some reason, the divorce between Robin and her first husband, David Preston Jessup, is like this big discussion in Sister Wives fandom and something that has been very, uh, I think, in some ways a bit secretive, suspicious, uh, mysterious, because one, it's hard to get court records in Montana because they don't have digital records online. So you'd have to physically contact the, the clerk in the county that she lived in to obtain a copy of these records. Two, because of the difficulty in getting the records and sort of the fact that we've only ever heard one side of things, we've only heard her side of how it went on the show and what she said about her ex-husband through Twitter and just like how what we hear that it was just a horribly terrible marriage. She claims that there was a DV in this marriage and that's about all we know and that the kids were not happy and there was a lot of scariness in the family, okay? And she left because she was done with marriage. Okay, so one of the things that she has said a lot is that she's the one that left and filed for divorce. 
But according to this new report by In Touch, it was actually David that filed for divorce from Robin and it happened in 2007. He filed in April of 2007. So they got married in two, June of 99 and they were divorced by April of 2007 and the divorce was actually finalized in 2009. Now this is the part that's a little bit tricky and I'm just going to say this right off the bat that I believe they might have the ages incorrect here because I believe Robin is only 44 years old based on DMV records and a ticket she got last year. So it says, according to court documents or divorce documents that they obtained, David was the one who petitioned for the divorce. At the time of their divorce, it says, David was 28 years old and worked as a contractor and Robin was 33 and unemployed. I don't think she was 33. I think they have that wrong because they're only like a year apart. The paperwork states that the reason for their divorce was that their marriage was ir irretrievably broken um, and there was serious marital discord. So they cited irreconcilable differences. Uh, I don't believe at the time of the filing, DV was listed as an issue uh, because David was the one that filed. It says there was no property that was accumulated during their marriage and she took back her maiden name of Sullivan once the divorce was finalized. So they're saying finalized 2007, she gets divorced or he files finalized in 2009 there's no division of assets but that actually is contradictory to what was detailed in a report by the hollywood by hollywood life that i found on web archive and it says that david did file for divorce uh she actually was responsible for a significant amount of debt in the marriage um, in the debt that she owed at the time of their divorce she owed thirty two thousand four hundred dollars that was owed to Target, Sears, and she actually had an over $1,000 bill to Victoria's Secret. Uh, she also received a VCR <laughs> and a Kirby vacuum cleaner, and he ended up with the uh, mobile home that was from 1974, so he got their trailer. So she left with debt, he got the, old, the 1974 trailer, and she got a VCR. Who knew VCRs were still a thing back in 2007? But they don't mention the debt in this article, so I don't know if they just have different documents. It sounds like some of the information they're getting from here is from a parenting plan, which actually happens after the divorce happens, so it's like their ongoing custody issues. So apparently, at the time of the divorce, he was ordered to pay $159 in child support per month to Robin, which is really small if you consider the fact that it was for three kids. This could mean at the time that all this was going on that he wasn't making a whole lot of money. It also could have meant that once the show got picked up, maybe he was making less so he didn't have to provide as much. It, I don't know how they figured this out. But it says he eventually stopped asking to see their children on a regular basis following the divorce according to the parenting plan. I'm assuming, and this is just my assumption, is he continued to live up in Montana and she moved down to Utah, which is a pretty significant distance apart. She was down in Lehigh, which is not far from Salt Lake City, and he was in Pinesdale, Montana. So getting to see the kids would have been challenging and they would have had to arrange travel days. So it could have, to, could have had to do with location. It just maybe he was being a deadbeat dad. Maybe he didn't want to have to deal with Robin. A lot of things happen in divorces, but that's what the parenting plan says. It says amid her romance with Cody, he apparently contacted Robin and the court to pursue a step parent adoption. He would then no longer have to pay, pay child support, but he apparently found out as a part of that, that, uh, that if he did the adoption, uh, it would prevent them from seeing the kids. So visitation with the kids would be cut off. So remember on the show, she said they did this all this huge back and forth where she was concerned uh, about him signing off of his rights because he still wanted to see the kids. And then they said they ended up agreeing to allow the kids to see their dad um, as a terms of the adoption. So even though he handed over the rights, uh, she ultimately uh, allowed them to see the kids. So it sounds like he was not on board with the adoption related to visitation because he still wanted to see the kids. So in 2014, when she ended up marrying Cody so that he could adopt the three children, he was 30 months behind on child support when he actually officially adopted the kids, Dayton, Aurora, and Brianna. So he did let them, he did allow the adoption to go through. And at the time he was 30 months behind, if you times 30 times $159, it's $4,770 that David was behind in child support. Probably a lot of money for him if he wasn't making very money, much money to begin with. 
So apparently there was a pretty tense meeting with the kids about this custody issue and he refused to let the children say that he, they wanted Cody to adopt them. So he didn't want to hear them talk, talk about the adoption. And he also accused Robin of forcing their kids to choose Cody over him. So he's, it sounds like he's accusing Robin of alienating the kids from him. That's how I would take it. But I don't know, like if they had a contentious relationship, if he did, if there was DV in this relationship, there could be a lot of things that are happening. And again, this is all just what they're reporting. Unfortunately, I would love to see the documents, but they actually didn't post them. So sometimes outlets will actually post the court records when they discuss them. Other times they don't. In this case, they did not post the records. So it says that after the meeting where he refused to let the kids say that they wanted Cody to adopt them um, and accused Robin of forcing the kids to choose him over Cody. So he believes that she's poisoning the kids against him. Robin took Dayton and Aurora and Brianna to a child psychologist and apparently they determined that she had anxiety from visiting their father. I don't know if there's any lawyers out there, if there are any court people out there. Are parenting plans being public? Is that a normal thing? I know that in other cases I've covered, parenting plans and child custody agreements are not always public. So if you know if they're public or not, I'm not, it, it's, it, some of this is like, wow, did that really come from a court record? And anxiety from seeing their dad, I, I feel bad for the kids, honestly. Is it commonplace for a parenting plan to be rele uh, released as a part of the public records? My question. Anyways, so it appears that they're not even on good terms following the split because the parenting plan revealed that Robin was listed as reality bitch in David's phone and his family doesn't have a history of sharing kind words about her. You know what I think is interesting is she says the family doesn't have kind words to say about me and I'm listed as reality bitch, but she's actually on on TV talking about David and he can't respond back. And I don't know if they ever asked him to be on the show or not, probably not. I don't know, maybe he didn't wanna speak out publicly. Maybe he wanted to be private. Maybe he didn't wanna be on TV. But the fact that he calls her reality bitch makes me think that like he didn't like the fact that she was on TV. Maybe he was a little salty about the things that she was saying about him publicly. What I think is also interesting in what we're hearing here and what we're seeing here is there's a lot of things about what David's saying and doing, but there's nothing a lot about like Robin or what Robin is saying and doing. So we're hearing like Robin, uh, Robin took the kids as a psychologist. David didn't want to see the kids. David didn't want the adoption to go through, but we're not really hearing about like what Robin's parenting side was. Like what did the psychologist say about Robin as a parent? That's like what I would love to know. I wish they would have posted the whole document so I could actually read it. I might actually have to call the court and get a copy of this if it's available. So, and long story short, is it fair in a parenting plan to say that he says things about her that are negative, but she's on reality TV actually saying things about him that are negative? Isn't it kind of a two-way street? And again, I know that divorces are contentious and I know that she has made claims against David that he is not a nice person. Unfortunately, because he has never spoken out publicly, we don't know what the claims are beyond what she says. And we only know based on this doc, this new article that he was not cool with the adoption and he felt like Robin was alienating him, alienating him. And what it sounds like to me is he ended up signing up with the adoption and going through with the adoption because of the back child support. So it was a way for him to get out of having to pay the debt, which is something that she actually talked about on the show. So what are your thoughts about Robin's messy divorce and that her ex calls her reality bitch? Tell me in the comments below. Bye guys.